Hello, spellcasters of all shapes and sizes. My name is Chance, and welcome to the 24th episode of our second level spell series over here at my spellbook. Now, without further ado, let me introduce you to Enhance Ability, which just sounds so freaking awesome to say. It's great. It is usable by the Bard, Cleric, Druid, Sorcerer, and the Artificer, and it is found in the good old Player's Handbook, which is pretty great. I do not know why the wizard does not get it, but whatever. In any case, let's take a look at the mechanics here. The effect at a glance is to magically enhance a creature. Your cast time is one action, the range is touch, the duration is one hour, and it is a concentration spell. The components are verbal, material, and somatic. If you're curious about that material component, it is fur or a feather from a beast. And when you cast it at higher levels, you can, you can target one extra target per spell slot above second. So essentially, if you cast it using a spell slot of third level, let's say, it'll actually let you target two creatures. It doesn't mean you can start, stack two effects on one creature creature sadly although i might allow that through homebrewing but that's up to you and the school is transmutation now let's take a look at its full description to better understand the exact wording of this spell and break down each individual option you touch a creature and bestow upon it a magical enhancement. Choose one of the following effects. The target gains that effect until the spell ends. Bears endurance. The target has advantage on constitution checks. It also gains 2 die 6 temporary hit points, which are lost when the spell ends. Bulls strength. The target has advantage on strength checks, and his or her carrying capacity doubles. Cat's great. The target has advantage on dexterity checks. It also doesn't take damage from falling 20 feet or less if it is incapacitated. Eagle Splendor. The target has advantage on charisma checks. Fox is cunning. The target has advantage on intelligence checks. Owl's Wisdom. The target has advantage on wisdom checks. At higher levels, when you cast a spell using a spell slot of third level or higher, you can target one additional creature for each spell slot level above second. Very, very cool stuff. Something I want to point out. These relate to checks, not saves. So for example, persuasion is a charisma check, not a save, if that makes sense. So this is actually quite useful, and this is really, really good if your party has a huge blind spot. For example, let's say everyone took intelligence in, as their dump stat, and you're in an environment where you need to make a lot of intelligence checks. This is a great way to kind of hedge your bets a little bit better. So that's just my humble opinion, of course, but you know what? It's up to you. Now let's move on to some cooler alternative uses here. So as I kind of mentioned too a little bit earlier, this is a great way of better balancing out your party and a great way of covering blind spots you might have developed just through virtue of min-maxing your characters. Secondly, this is a great way of winning events. Fantastic way because no matter how you look at it, no matter how your DM sets up an event, having advantage on checks is always going to help you out. And thirdly, if you really need to show off a great feat of strength or heroism, this is a great way of making it more likely for you to be successful. I think I really like this spell if you're planning on playing a long term campaign. Reason I say that is you would be surprised how often it happens to play out where your party is just unprepared to make a certain series of checks and your life is on the line. This is something a lot of DMs do with experienced parties, so I think this is a great spell to have in your arsenal if you're planning on playing that character for the long term. If you're just playing a one shot, I might not recommend it. Uh, typically, people are a lot more balanced in one shots, at least that's what I've noticed, but ultimately, I'll leave it up to your discretion. In any case, if you have any alternative uses cool ideas interesting concepts or questions please put them down in the comment section beneath i really do appreciate hearing from you guys also if you like that cool hand-drawn warforge on the screen and you like your own hand-drawn D, D character please check out the guild hall to figure out exactly how to do that that being said thank you so much everyone i hope you have a great day and as always happy casting